Hey YouTube, it's the Test Lead, and today's video is the golden handcuffs in 2022. Is your high paying job actually ruining your life? The golden handcuffs is a very old term, but it's still very relevant today. Because of inflation and the high salary raises in certain fields such as tech, you may already be a victim to the golden handcuffs without even realizing it. It is very important to not only be aware of the work that you're doing inside of your office, but also how it's affecting your outside life. This video will cover what are the golden handcuffs, what are the cons of the golden handcuffs, and how to avoid falling victim to the golden handcuffs. So first, what are the golden handcuffs? The golden handcuffs is a term to describe the high salary as well as other benefits that certain jobs give you so that you stay at the job. This is usually provided to you so that in comparison, other companies that may be a smaller can offer you the same perks. So now you're forced to stay at that job if you wanna keep those perks. If these extra benefits and bonuses were not provided to you, you probably would not be staying at this job. It is called the golden handcuffs because you are basically trapped and stuck to have to continue working at that one job. And the thing that's keeping you there in the golden handcuffs is if you leave the job and you don't have the same benefits anymore, then your lifestyle has to completely change and possibly downgrade, which people don't like. The golden handcuffs can be presented to you in many forms. Sometimes it's bonuses, sometimes it's stock options, school payments, unlimited vacation, and many other items. The amount of incentives that certain companies can offer now to retain their employees is limitless. So next, what are the cons of the golden handcuffs? So you hear all these positive things about all oh, getting money, benefits, and things like that. So what are the possible drawbacks? In today's day and age, many people's biggest stressors are their jobs. You spend a good amount of your daily life working. Some people even spend more time working at an office than with their spouses and family. So why are so many people at a job that they can't stand? It's the money and the benefits. Often, many jobs offer these high salaries and other incentives as part of an agreement, which forces you to stay at the job. Many big tech companies offer you shares, but make you wait a certain period before you can actually claim the shares. Then once you reach that goal, they offer you more shares at a later date and other incentives to keep you for another period. These continuous incentives create a cycle, and then 10 years later, you're looking back like, wow, I spent hundreds of hours at a job that I hate with what to show for it. Say you want to leave your job, you're tired of how you're being treated and realize it's affecting your out of work relationships. You leave work to go to your new home with a three car garage and BMW parked outside and an expensive mortgage. You go to your spouse and tell them how you feel and say you want to leave your job. That's when your spouse reminds you that you can't afford a pay cut. In order to continue to afford the current lifestyle that your family is living, you gotta keep the job. Now you have a big decision. Do you become selfish and take a pay cut that way you're happy but then your family is suffering because their lifestyle has to get downgraded now or do you just continue to work out somewhere where you're miserable at just to make your family happy that's where the handcuffs come in because now you're locked in your family's used to a certain lifestyle this is the real negative of the golden handcuffs how to avoid being a victim of the golden handcuffs now that you know what the golden handcuffs are you can take the necessary steps from having it placed onto you and you being a victim of the golden handcuffs Step one is to save. Try to save at least six months to one year of your current lifestyle expenses. Now, if you had to leave a job because you are sad, you can survive for at least six months to a year without any lifestyle changes. Number two, lifestyle creep. Lifestyle creep can be described as increasing your standard of living as your salary increases. So now because you're making more money, you're spending more money. If you continue to do this as you make more money, you're not saving any more money than you were before, so you have to keep working at the current job you have in order to maintain your lifestyle and survive. Step three, find a livable salary. Live slightly below your means and find a realistic salary where you and your family can be happy while living. I'm not saying you have to eat cans of tuna and ramen noodles every day, but just don't splurge every single day. Find a nice medium where you and your family are happy, you can enjoy things, but you also aren't just wasting your money just because you have excess money. Save the excess money so that's less work you have to do later in your life. Once you have this livable salary number, you can trade the extra money and extra long hours at the office for less stress and possibly more time with your loved ones. Honestly speaking, with all the above methods, you probably can't afford all the new shiny things that come out as soon as they come out. You have to be disciplined and accept that. But if you do keep up with the excessive lifestyle and buying a new car every chance you get, you'll soon realize that new car smell wears off faster and faster and you can continue you want new things at a faster rate. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want another video like this, please click here. 
And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.